everyone, I am Mrs. Franz. Um, I work um, at ECA with the students, also with teachers, um, working with um, supporting language learning uh, using different tools um, like motivation, uh, confidence, and other strategies. I uh, would like to share with you a short reflection today. Um, it has been already over two months since the quarantine began, and it hasn't been easy. But I personally have learned a lot from this experience. Um, what I have learned has been uh, to put all my trust in God and in His promises. This is a time to grow in our faith. His word in Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God, God gave me this, these words to the people of Israel during a very difficult time. The people of Israel were in captivity in Babylon. They were going to be there for a long time. God did not spare their pain um, for during the captivity but he promised he will be with them all the time and will care for them despite their situation. God had a covenant, um, a commitment, a promise, made that promise to them um, with the people of Israel. His character and love was very real to them as it is for us now. His plans were good for them, bringing hope in the future, as, they, as it is for us now. A future with Him on earth and for eternity. Hope um, in the future as we live our lives in His hands. God never changes. We use this verse as the motto for Investing Hope Foundation, uh, directed by my husband. We want to share with families, especially with children in poor communities, that they can trust in God so they can dream of a better future um, here and also for eternity. During the last few weeks, Investing Hope had decided to donate bread to these families. We put about 25 bread rolls and a Bible verse inside a bag for each family. This is the bread for a physical, but also a spiritual need. We have a bakery in Ciudad Bolivar, so people are baking bread there. And so men from um, the Armada Nacional even help us to deliver the bread to the different areas. We're receiving donations to make more bread and to deliver uh, to more families. We know there are churches and families from from ECA, donating groceries to help people who don't have any food. I think that is, those are God's plans. I think that He likes, He likes when we do these. We know there are many people in Colombia who have not been able to work and have money to put food on their table. But often we don't hear about their personal stories. So I talked to a woman who received the bread for her family from uh, Investing Hope Bakery. And her story really touched my heart. So I want to share it with you. As I began to talk to her, she spoke with incredible gratefulness for, her, for the bread she received. She told me she, dream, she cleans houses and her husband is a construction worker, but they have not been able to work over uh, two months. They have not touched a peso bill since early March, yet they have been fed. With four children, two grandchildren, and no income to buy more food, but she talked about God's provision. There was no fear in her voice. There was no desperation that you will no normally hear in these moments of crisis. There was a very strong faith and love for God. As I listened to, to her, my heart was beating really fast. I was listening to the most incredible story. I just felt God telling me something she had 
just much faith that I felt she was like a teacher and I was her student. She told me that even uh, when they received the, the message about the bread, uh, the next day they waited to have it for breakfast. They didn't know what time it would um, come, uh, but they got it as she was serving coffee for her family in the morning. They were overjoyed. She told me that she trusts in God for impossible things, and that is when, and that is when our faith becomes real. She said that when people in her neighborhood decided to put a red cloth on their windows, like this one, they put it on their houses to show that they had no food, she decided not to put one on her window because she knew God will be faithful to provide for them. And that is what, that's what happened. I was amazed and rejoiced at her faith. I think that we're part of God's family and we can hear and move to help others in times of great need. Uh, we can be doers of God's word and not only listeners. God can provide miraculously like he did in many Bible stories. But many times he depends on us to be his hands to help people. Like from the example, the boy uh, from the story who um, shared uh, the fish and the bread he had and Jesus multiplied it. To finish this reflection, I want to share where God talks about a new covenant, covenant, a promise with the people of Israel and anyone who put their trust in him. He says, I will put my laws in their, in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they, they will be my people. I would like to pray and uh, pray that God help us to provide for the people in need in Colombia, in Bogota, that is near us, and that uh, we grow in our faith. Uh, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you so for um, just helping us to grow in our faith and to trust in your promises and the covenant that you had uh, made with us. Thank you for uh, the provision that we have had in our homes. And thank you because we are your children. And I pray that um, the church are here in Bogota, and families at ECA that um, are, have their hearts to know people who are in great need that will be all giving and sharing with the people who uh, are suffering and that they don't have um, ways or means to put food on their table. I pray that you move uh, ways that we can um, just be doers of your word and that we love you and we love others. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.